All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I am Sarabjit Kaur and with me is V Ravi Kumar. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address one of Europe's largest digital and startup events, VivaTech today. government says advance online registration for covid-19 vaccination is not mandatory india achieves a major milestone by administering 26 crore doses of corona vaccine mandatory hall marking of goal to come into force from today government simplifies registration process for micro medium and small enterprises railways to invest 55000 crore rupees for modernization of signaling telecommunication and other infrastructure nato leaders include attacks in space in their mutual defense clause india enter third and final round following 1-1 draw against afghanistan in asia cup soccer qualifiers in doha bcci announces 15 member squad for world test championships final against new zealand And in Euro 2020 soccer, Cristiano Ronaldo becomes top scorer in men's European Championship history as Portugal beat Hungary in Budapest, France defeat Germany 1-0. As many states are relaxing lockdown norms, we advise our listeners not to lower their guard as the COVID-19 pandemic remains a threat to our health. Please stay at home unless it is essential to go out and continue to follow the four simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain 2 gaz ki doori for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene and get vaccinated. For any covid related information and guidance, contact national helpline numbers 0112397-8046 and 1075. And now the news. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will deliver the keynote address at the 5th edition of Viva Tech today. Viva Tech is one of the largest digital and startup events in Europe. The Prime Minister has been invited as a guest of honor to deliver the keynote address at the event this year. Other prominent speakers in the event include French President Emmanuel Macron, Prime Minister of Spain Pedro Sanchez, and ministers and MPs from various European countries. The event will also witness participation of corporate leaders including Apple CEO Tim Cook, Facebook chairman Mark Zuckerberg and Microsoft president Brad Smith. VivaTech is held in Paris every year since 2016. It is jointly organized by Publicis Group, a prominent advertising and marketing conglomerate and less of course a leading French media group. It brings together stakeholders in technology innovation and the startup ecosystem and includes exhibitions, awards, panel discussions and startup contests. The 5th edition of VivaTech is scheduled to be held between 16th and 19th June. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has re-emphasized India's call for an open and inclusive order in the Indo-Pacific region. He was addressing the ASEAN Defence Ministers Meeting Plus through video conferencing today. The minister presented India's views on dealing with major security challenges in the region. Mr Singh underlined the importance of need-based respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity of nations. peaceful resolutions of disputes through dialogue and adherence to international rules and laws he also reiterated india's support to freedom of navigation and overflight for all in international waters in accordance with the un convention on the law of the sea uncls home minister amit shah held a high level meeting to review the preparedness to deal with the flood situation in the country mr shah also reviewed the long term measures for formulation of a comprehensive policy to mitigate the perennial flood problems of the country during the meeting a series of discussions have been taken home minister also directed the officials to strengthen coordination mechanisms between the central and state agencies to create a system for forecasting of floods and rise in water levels in major catchment zones of the country he also advised the jal shakti ministry to work out a mechanism for desilting of large dams which will help in flood control the government has said that india is registering a significant decline in active case loads and fresh cases with this 
The recovery rate is continuously improving in the country and it has reached 95.64%. Briefing the media in New Delhi, Joint Secretary of Health and Family Welfare Ministry Love Agarwal said, The country had registered a maximum number of over 4 lakh cases on 7th May last month and since then, daily cases are continuously declining in the country. He said, almost 85% decline in cases has been registered since the highest reported peak in daily cases. He said, India has registered over 60,000 new cases in the last 24 hours, which is lowest after 75 days. He added that a decline of 30% in average daily new cases has been registered in the last two weeks. He said there are 366 districts where drastic reduction in cases have been witnessed in the last six weeks. अगर हम पिछले 24 घंटे का डेटा एनालाइज करें तो हम पाते हैं कि करीब 60471 केसेस पिछले 24 घंटे में देश में रिपोर्ट हुए हैं यानी कि जो पीक देश ने एक नोट की थी उसमें करीब 85% डिक्लाइन इन टर्म्स ऑफ द डेली केसेस गेटिंग रिपोर्टेड अब हम नोट कर रहे हैं पिछले 8 दिनों से हम देखें तो पाते हैं कि देश में 1 लाख से कम संख्या में डेली बेसिस पर केसेस रिपोर्ट हुए हैं हेल्थ एंड फैमिली वेलफेयर मिनिस्ट्री हैज सेड दैट प्री रजिस्ट्रेशन फॉर वैक्सीनेशन थ्रू ऑनलाइन रजिस्ट्रेशन and prior booking of appointment is not mandatory to avail the COVID-19 vaccine. It said anyone aged 18 years and above can directly go to the nearest vaccination center wherein the vaccinator performs the on-site registration and provides vaccination. India has achieved a significant milestone in its ongoing COVID-19 vaccination drive. The cumulative number of COVID-19 vaccine doses administered in the country has crossed the 26 crore mark Health and Family Welfare Ministry said that over 26 crore 17 lakh doses have been administered to the beneficiaries so far. Over 13 lakh 13,000 vaccine doses were administered as the first dose and more than 54,000 vaccine doses given as the second dose to the age group 18 to 44 years yesterday. Chhattisgarh now ranks second in the whole country in terms of administering the second dose of COVID vaccine to health workers and frontline workers. The state ranks among the first three states in the country in terms of vaccination of people above the age of 45 years. So far, about 73 lakh doses of COVID vaccine have been administered in the state. More details from our correspondent. Tribal Buster Division of Chhattisgarh is usually in the limelight due to Maoist activities, but the remote village of Renga Nar in Dantewada district has set an example in COVID vaccination. It has become the first village in the state where every eligible person has got vaccinated against corona infection. In this tribal hamlet of Renga Nar, earlier people were not coming forward to get the vaccine due to certain misconceptions, but later local health workers and awareness teams went door to door telling people the benefits of vaccination and motivated them to get the vaccine. Their efforts paid off and today all the 294 eligible persons of this village have got the COVID vaccine. Vikal Pashukla, AIR News, Raipur. Madhya Pradesh government has issued fresh guidelines for unlocking yesterday. According to the new guidelines, restaurants and gyms are allowed to admit 50% of their customers into their establishments. All shops Shopping malls and gyms will open from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. More from our Bhopal correspondent. Government offices and private companies are allowed to work with 100% of their employees. The Janta curfew will remain effective on Sundays and the night curfew will be in place in the urban areas. Any kind of gatherings will remain banned. Cinema, theatre, swimming pools will remain closed. Schools, colleges, coaching institutes will remain closed but online classes will continue. Assembly of more than six people at a time will remain banned. Not more than six devotees will be allowed at a time in religious places with COVID protocols. Maximum 50 people will be permitted for a wedding, while 10 people will be permitted for a funeral. Pooja P. Vardhan, AIR News, Bhopal. In Odisha, the number of COVID-19 cases continue to decline. The state reported more than 8,700 cases on the 1st of June. The number had since come down to 3,405 new cases yesterday. A report from our correspondent. 
The test positivity rate too has slid down from a high of above 20% to less than 6% as of now. However, while many districts of the state have been reporting a positivity below 5%, some coastal districts, including Khurdha, the home district of capital Bhubaneswar, still had a slightly higher positivity. Meanwhile, the state government is likely to come up with a comprehensive plan on lockdown and unlocking today since the statewide lockdown imposed since the 5th of last month comes to a close by tomorrow morning. Girish Chandra Das, AIR News, Bhubaneswar. Gujarat has recorded 352 new cases of COVID-19 yesterday. 1,006 patients recovered during the last 24 hours and were discharged from hospitals. More details from our Ahmedabad correspondent. Total 8,2187 patients have been recovered from COVID-19 in Gujarat till now. The recovery rate further improved and reached up to 97.70%. Maximum 48 new cases of COVID-19 reported from Ahmedabad and Surat. Four patients lost their lives yesterday. Gujarat has now 8,884 active cases at present, out of which 219 patients are on ventilator. Meanwhile, 2,63,630 persons have been vaccinated in the state yesterday. According to the official sources, more than 50% of 45 plus age group have been vaccinated for the first dose in Gujarat till now. Yogesh Pandya, AIR News, Ahmedabad. The Health and Family Welfare Minister Dr. Harshwardhan has said that the countries around the globe have recognized the potential benefits that humankind can enjoy by embracing yoga. He said increasing acceptance of yoga across the world is evidence of its wide popularity. Dr. Harshwardhan addressed the inaugural ceremony of Global Yoga Conference 2021 yesterday. He said the government is committed to take yoga to every citizen as this is beneficial for the health and well-being of the population. Highlighting the benefits of yoga during the COVID-19 pandemic, Dr. Harshwardhan has said the benefits of yoga in immunity building and management of stress are crucial. He said yoga offers a solution for maintaining physical fitness as well as contributing towards one's mental peace. The 7th International Day of Yoga will be celebrated on the 21st of this month. You're listening to the Morning News on All India Radio, a reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address one of Europe's largest digital and startup events, VivaTech, today. Government says advanced online registration for COVID-19 vaccination is not mandatory. India achieves a major milestone by administering 26 crore doses of corona vaccine. Mandatory hallmarking of gold to come into force from today. Government simplifies registration process for micro, medium and small enterprises. Railways to invest 55,000 crore rupees for modernization of signaling, telecommunication and other infrastructure. NATO leaders include attacks in space in their mutual defense clause. India enter the third and final round following one-all draw against Afghanistan in the Asia Cup soccer qualifiers in Doha. BCCI announces 15-member squad for World Test Championships final against New Zealand. And in Euro 2020 soccer, Cristiano Ronaldo becomes top scorer in men's European Championship history as Portugal beat Hungary in Budapest. France defeat Germany 1-0. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on Twitter handle at AIR News Alert. is disseminating awareness of national helpline numbers for the benefit of citizens during the COVID-19 pandemic. The helpline number of the Health and Family Welfare Ministry is 1075. The Child Helpline number is 1098. For senior citizens of Delhi, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, Telangana, Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand, the helpline number is 14567. The helpline number of the National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, Nimhans for Psychological Support, is 080-4611007. The Ayush COVID-19 Counseling Helpline number is 1443. And MyGov WhatsApp Help Desk number is 9013151515. Welcome back to the Morning News. Mandatory hallmarking of gold jewellery has come into force from today. 
Hall marking has been initially started in 256 districts of the country which have assaying marking centers. The Union Ministry of Consumer Affairs has informed that after wide-range discussions with various stakeholders, a set of decisions have been taken regarding hall marking which will benefit both customers and businesses. Under the new provisions, gold of additional carrots including 20, 23 and 24 have also been allowed for hall marking. In order to give adequate time to the manufacturers, wholesalers and retailers of gold jewellery, no penalties will be levied till August 10th this year. No restrictions have been imposed on dwellers to buy back old gold jewellery without hallmark from consumers. The government has simplified the registration process for the micro, medium and small enterprises, MSMEs. Now only PAN card and Aadhaar will be required for registration of MSMEs. This was announced by the Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises Minister Nitin Gadkari yesterday. Addressing a webinar, Mr. Gadkari said, there is a need to impart training to small units in fields of entrepreneurship and other related aspects. Assuring full support to the MSME industry by the government, he expressed hope that banks and non-banking financial companies would come forward to provide support to small businesses. Emphasizing the importance of MSMEs in the economy, the minister said, MSMEs contribute significantly in the economic and social development of the country by fostering entrepreneurship and generating huge employment opportunities. Indian Railways has envisaged investment of nearly 55,000 crore rupees for modernization of signaling, telecommunication and other infrastructure development. Railways have also started electronic interlocking or EI at 2,221 railway stations so far. Further, 1,550 EIs are planned to be provided in the next three years. Electronic interlocking is being adopted on a large scale to derive benefits of digital technologies in train operation and to enhance safety. Speaking to reporters, Member Infrastructure Railway Board Sanjeev Mittal said, Spectrum allocation to engine railways and provision of more modern signaling solutions will boost all-round safety in railway operations. He said, more available signal bandwidth will help eliminate train collision due to human error and enhance speed potential. Senior officials of the Ministry of Finance will be holding an interactive meeting on June 22nd with emphasis on issues and glitches in the recently launched e-filing portal of the Income Tax Department. Other stakeholders, including members from ICAI, auditors, consultants and taxpayers, will also be a part of the interaction. The new portal has been fraught with several technical glitches leading to taxpayer inconvenience. Written representations on the problems and difficulties faced in the portal have also been invited from the stakeholders. Our correspondent reports that representatives from Infosys team will be present to answer queries, clarify issues and receive inputs on the working of the portal to remove glitches and sort out issues faced by the taxpayers. A special NIA court has sentenced three persons under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act in Mumbai. The NIA court sentenced the accused, namely Mohammed Muzamil, Mohammed Sadiq and Mohammed Akram to 10 years rigorous imprisonment. The case was initially registered at ATS Kala Chowki, Mumbai in August 2012 under Arms Act relating to the arrest of accused persons and recovery of firearms. Initial investigation had revealed that the accused were members of banned terrorist organization lashkar e taiba and harkat ul jihad e islami Accordingly, sections of UAP Act were invoked in the case. The NIA had re-registered the case in June 2013 and taken over the investigation. In Bihar, 18 people lost their lives and 8 others were injured in lightning and rain-related incidents across the state during the last 24 hours. The fatalities were reported from eight districts, including Patna, Sivan, Bhujpur and Vishali. The injured people are being treated in the local government hospitals. The weathermen have forecast heavy rains in different parts of the state in the next 48 hours. Meanwhile, Chief Minister Nitish Kumar has instructed three district magistrates of Gopalganj, East and West Champaran to remain on high alert and keep a special vigil. The move comes in the wake of heavy downpour in the catchment areas of Gandak River in Nepal in the last 24 hours. All India Radio Lay is celebrating its Golden Jubilee on the 25th of this month. Our Lay correspondent has filed this report on the measures the government is taking to make the region carbon neutral. 
यूटी लद्दाख पावर डिपार्टमेंट इज इन एडवांस स्टेज ऑफ एग्जीक्यूशन ऑफ फाइव हंड्रेड करोड़ रूपीज वर्ड वेरियस पावर जेनरेशन प्रोजेक्ट विद वन मेगावट पावर प्रोजेक्ट बाई ओ एन जी सी एट पूगा लद्दाख ऑल्सो सेट टू बी डिक्लेयर एज अ फर्स्ट स्टेट टू एक्सप्लोर जियो थर्मल एनर्जी इन द कंट्री बाई नेक्स्ट ईयर सिमिलरली एन एम ओ यू साइन रिसेंटली टू एग्जीक्यूट ए फाइव हंड्रेड मेगावट सोलर पावर प्लान इन ले डिस्ट्रिक्ट विद द सोलर एनर्जी कॉरपोरेशन ऑफ इंडिया एंड फाइव मेगा पावर सोलर पावर प्लांट एक जांच कर इन करगिल डिस्ट्रिक्ट विद सी एस ए पावर डिपार्टमेंट सेक्रेटरी रविंदर कुमार टॉक से बाद द विजन ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट ऑन कार्बन नेचुरल माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी के विजन के हिसाब से कार्बन न्यूट्रलिटी को लेकर जितने भी हमारे सोर्स ऑफ एनर्जी है उसको हम क्लीन एनर्जी सोर्स ऑफ एनर्जी में बदलने जा रहे हैं मकसद यही है की हम जो डिपेंडेंसी है फोसिल फ्यूल के ऊपर उसको कम किया जाए और जो नए सोर्सेस ऑफ एनर्जी है चाहे क्लीन एनर्जी के लिए उनका प्रयोग करके लोगों को एक अच्छा एनर्जी सोर्स दिया जाए और कार्बन का जो हम एमिशन कर रहे हैं उसको कम किया जाए विद इन नियर फ्यूचर लद्दाख विल बी एनर्जी सफिशियंट एंड कार्बन नेचुरल रीजन टू प्रोटेक्ट फ्रेजर हिमालयन एनवायरमेंट विद रमेश चंद्र यंग सेंट्रोल माउ एयर न्यूज लद्दाख नेटू लीडर्स हैव एक्सपेंडेड द यूज ऑफ देयर ऑल फॉर वन वन फॉर ऑल म्यूचुअल डिफेंस क्लॉज टू इंक्लूड अ कलेक्टिव रिस्पॉन्स टू अटैक्स इन स्पेस आर्टिकल फाइव ऑफ नेटोज फाउंडिंग ट्रीटी स्टेट दैट एन अटैक ऑन एनी वन ऑफ द थर्टी एलाइज will be considered an attack on them all until now it's only applied to more traditional military attacks on land sea or in the air and more recently in cyberspace in a summit state statement the leader said they consider that attacks to from or within space could be a challenge to nato that threatens national and euro atlantic prosperity security and stability and could be as harmful to modern societies as a conventional attack Britain and Australia have announced the broad outlines of a free trade deal to eliminate tariffs on a wide range of goods as the UK seeks to expand links around the world following its exit from the European Union. The pact is expected to boost exports of traditional British products such as Scotch whisky while boosting imports of lamb and wine from Australia. It is the first trade deal Britain has negotiated from scratch since it left the EU. With 38 days to go for Tokyo Olympic Games, All India Radio today will talk about prime male table tennis participant Achint Sharad Kamal. Born on 12th of July 1982 in Chennai district of Tamil Nadu, Sharad Kamal certified for the Tokyo Games in March by beating Pakistan's Ramiz Mohammad in the Asian Olympic qualification match at Doha. This will be the Sharad Kamal's fourth Olympics having competed for the first time in 2004. But this can be the first time that Sharad Kamal would compete in two occasions in the games, men's singles and mixed doubles. Sharad Kamal received two historic bronze medals in men's team and mixed doubles in the 2018 Jakarta Asian Games. The veteran paddler won a gold in men's team, a silver in men's doubles and two bronze medals in men's singles and mixed doubles in the 2018 Gold Coast Commonwealth Games. A nine-time senior national champion, Sharad Kamal was awarded the Padma Shri in 2019. In Asia Cup qualifiers, India were lucky to get away with a 1-1 draw against Afghanistan without actually scoring in a groupie match in Doha last night. India still advanced to the third and final round after Afghan goalkeeper scored the goal in their account. Oais Azizi scored the self goal in the 75th minute and Hossein Zamani's 82nd minute strike drew parity at the Jasim bin Hamad Stadium. Importantly for Sunil Chetri's team India entered the third and final round of the qualifiers along with Afghanistan. India finished at the third position in group E with 7 points from 8 matches. They won only one match, lost 3 and drew 4 games. They scored 6 goals and conceded 7 to end up with a negative goal difference. In the Euro 2020 soccer Cristiano Ronaldo became the top scorer in the men's European Championship history. as portugal beat hungary in front of more than 60000 fans in budapest ronaldo converted an 87th minute penalty for his 10th goal in the competition overtaking france's michel platini on nine goals his 11th came only after a few minutes when he took the ball around goalkeeper peter gulachi for portugal's third hungary had looked on course for an unlikely draw until they conceded three times late on the deadlock was broken in the 84th minute when rafael guerrero's shot with the outside of the foot took a massive deflection of defender willy orban to beat hungary's brave resistance later on in munich world champions france started their campaign with a win over germany thanks to mats hummels 
own goal in a high quality heavyweight group F encounter. Hummels he called for this tournament after being told by coach Joaquim Lowe in 2019 that his international career was over, diverted Lucas Hernandez cross into his own net in the first half of a fascinating contest. Tournament favorites France were marginally the better of the two sides. BCCI has announced the 15 member squad for the World Test Championship final against New Zealand. Mayank Agarwal and KL Rahul are notable absentees in the Virat Kohli led side while test regulars like Cheteshwar Pujara Vice Captain Ajinka Rahane and Ravichandran Ashwin have all been picked. All rounder Ravindra Jadeja, who did not play the home series against England due to an injury, has also been picked. Rohit Sharma and Shubman Gill have been picked as openers. Hanuma Vihari is also in the squad after missing the home test against England with an injury. Rishabh Pant and Riddhiman Saha have been picked as wicket keepers. In the fast bowling department, India have picked Ishan Sharma, Jaspreet Bumrah, Mohammad Shami, Mohammad Siraj, and Umesh Yadav with Shardul Thakur. Missing out. Spin bowling all rounders Washington Sundar and Akshar Patel have also missed out. And now let us take a look at the weather forecast for the day. The national capital Delhi will see thunderstorms with rain. The minimum temperature was 26 degrees and the maximum will go up to 36 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have a generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. The minimum temperature was 25 degrees Celsius, while the maximum is expected to be around 32 degrees. Chennai will see a generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. The temperatures will vary between 27 and 38 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will see a generally cloudy sky with few spells of rain or thunder showers. The minimum temperature was 26 degrees Celsius and the maximum will go up to 30 degrees. Jammu will have a partly cloudy sky with the possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. The minimum temperature was 26 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 35 degrees. Srinagar will have a partly cloudy sky with the possibility of rain or thunderstorm. The temperatures will hover between 14 and 26 degrees Celsius. Leh will have a generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. The temperatures will vary between 6 and 19 degrees Celsius. Gilgit, the temperatures will hover between 20 and 35 degrees Celsius. Muzaffarabad will have a partly cloudy sky. The minimum temperature was 19 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be around 35 degrees. Dehradun, the minimum temperature was 22 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be around 33 degrees. Chandigarh will see a partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain. The minimum temperature was 26 degrees and the maximum will be 32 degrees Celsius. Hyderabad, the minimum temperature was 23 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be around 33 degrees. Ahmedabad will have a generally cloudy sky. The minimum temperature was 28 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 38 degrees. In Bhopal, rain could occur towards evening or night. The minimum temperature was 22 degrees, and the maximum will be 35 degrees. And now an overview of today's newspapers. India witnesses 85% decline in new COVID-19 cases, reports the statesman. With relaxations and restrictions across the country, doctors warn that if COVID norms are ignored, the third wave will be worse, informs the Asian age. Under the caption, Opening up hope on the horizon, the Economic Times writes, Vehicle buying ready to move into higher gear. Newspapers today also carry pictures of tributes being paid to the 20 soldiers who died in the Galwan Valley clash a year ago. Nation pays homage to Galwan Valley martyrs, writes the statesman. And finally, in a bid to conserve trees, 75-year-old trees to get Rs. 2,500 pension annually in Haryana. Senior citizen benefits for green lungs, states the pioneer. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address one of Europe's largest digital and startup events, Vivatech, today. Government says advanced online registration for COVID-19 vaccination is not mandatory. India achieves a major milestone by administering 26 crore doses of Corona vaccine. Mandatory hallmarking of goal to come into force from today. Government simplifies the registration process for micro, medium and small enterprises. Railways to invest 55,000 crore rupees for modernization of signaling, telecommunication and other infrastructure. NATO leaders include attacks in space in their mutual defense clause. India enter third and final round following 1-1 draw against Afghanistan in Asia Cup Soccer Qualifiers in Doha. BCCI announces 
15 member squad for World Test Championships final against New Zealand. And in Euro 2020 soccer, Cristiano Ronaldo becomes top scorer in men's European Championship history as Portugal beat Hungary in Budapest. France defeat Germany 1-0. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.com and with that we end the morning news. Have a nice day.